You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to the third episode of the New Thinking series. This series is based on my upcoming book, New Thinking, which covers the fascinating grand story of science and technology and uncovers the stories of those who built our world. But more on this later. This episode covers something that all of us have had experience with but have largely forgotten, the MP3 player. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the MP3 player. And today, carrying vast libraries of digital music in our pockets is now a common occurrence. But what was the MP3 player that started it all? If we try and think back to where it all began, a lot of people would mention the original iPod, but the story of the MP3 player has its roots all the way back to the late 1970s. In this video, we'll take an interesting look at the twists and turns throughout that story. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. I spent some time creating a landing and information page for the new thinking book using Squarespace. It's interactive, so you can have a look around and see some of the key characters in the story. These are the builders of our modern world, including the likes of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, but also some early pioneers like Douglas Engelbart, who created the graphical user interface and mouse, and others like Alexander Graham Bell and Nikola Tesla. A lot of people have been asking when the book's gonna be released, and as mentioned in a previous video, the release date is January 2019. So Squarespace made this site a breeze to set up. It's basically drag, drop, and type. There's no need to patch anything or code. If you want to make a website quickly and easily, I do recommend using the service. Start your free trial today at www.squarespace.com slash coldfusion to get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, so let's start the twisting story of the MP3 player. In 1979, a British scientist, Kane Kramer, and his friend, James Campbell, came up with the idea for a cigarette packet-sized portable solid-state music player. Kramer at the time was 23, and Campbell only 21. The system, called IXI, had a display screen and buttons for four-way navigation. Is this sounding familiar? Solid-state storage at the time was severely limited, but Kramer fully expected this to improve. He foresaw a market for reliable, high-quality digital music players that would be popular with both consumers and record label companies. Kramer soon filed a patent to start his own company, Things were going well initially, and there was a projection of over $328 million worth of orders. He even had Sir Paul McCartney as a financial backer. The really surprising thing about Kramer's invention wasn't the player itself of the distributed network behind it. It was eerily similar to the iTunes store and most modern online music stores. Musical content could be stored on a central server and distributed via telephone line. Remember, Back then, there was no internet and almost no home computers. Customers would take their players into the store and buy music which would be loaded onto removable chips inside the player, kind of like a tiny cassette. This vision encompassed the end of physical media in 1979. Just to give you an idea how forward thinking this was, vinyl records were at their prime and the CD hadn't even been invented yet. Here are some excerpts from Kramer's investor pitch that he wrote on a typewriter. Live performances can be taped and then made immediately available. No physical inventory and therefore no production costs. Entire back catalogues can be put on sale at almost no cost. New, risky artists can be promoted with low cost. Instant micro-billing handled centrally. Coin-operated vending machines for self-purchasing located in bars, filling stations and supermarkets. Despite this amazing vision, in 1988, the patent was at risk of lapsing and Kramer's company needed $320,000 in order to renew it. There was a boardroom dispute on the issue and the patent lapsed, meaning that Kramer wouldn't get any recognition for any products using this idea. This early digital audio player was never put into production. And even so, at the time, it was still four years until the MP3 format came into existence. MP3 would be the vital key in portable music. So what is MP3? MP3 stands for MPEG-1 Audio Layer 3. It's basically an audio compression standard that was designed by a collaborative group of companies and engineers in 1992. Its aim was to create audio files which sounded basically the same as CD quality to a human, but only took up about 10% of the space. This was done in a pretty smart way. You see, the human ear is limited in its perception. There's only so many frequencies that we can hear. 
an MP3 compression algorithm removes the excess audio data which is almost unperceivable to the human ear, resulting in a much smaller file size but with similar sound quality. Although the technology for an MP3 player existed in the early 1990s, American companies were too worried about being sued by the music industry to create a portable player of their own. Sony had just bought Columbia Records, so they weren't going to pioneer this new market. The only company brave enough to take on the concept of an MP3 player and put it into production was Seihan Information Systems, a small Korean spin-off from Samsung. The first portable MP3 player was the MP Man, a play on Walkman I guess, launched in March of 1998 by Seihan Information Systems. The flash-based MP3 player had either 32 or 64 megabytes of memory, that's about 6 to 12 songs. It also included an LCD screen to tell the user what song was currently playing. The cost was around $600 in today's money. At this time, MP3s were just starting to get distributed across the internet, with MP3.com being established a year earlier and Napster being launched a year later. Despite it being a pioneering device, the MP Man hardly caused a ripple when it was unveiled for the first time at Korean booths at an annual tech conference in Hanover, Germany. No one was quite sure what this was. Mr. J.R. Bum, the vice president of a local tech company who was there to witness the event, comments, quote, No matter how the Korean staff tried to explain what an MP3 player was, people just didn't understand why they needed such a device because they could listen to music on CDs or cassettes. A few people accepted that the MP3 player was something cool, but most people just didn't take it seriously. End quote. A few months later, the Diamond Rio PMP300 would go on sale, becoming the second MP3 player in existence. But they were quickly sued by the Recording Industry Association of America. Fortunately, they won the case, and this was very important. If Diamond didn't win this case, we may not have portable MP3 music of any kind today. From this time, the MP3 market chugged along, but it still wasn't a revolution. As we all know, the iPod came along in 2001. It managed to solve the biggest problem with MP3 players up until that date, the user interface. Before the iPod, you had to manually click through songs, each one by one, on physical buttons. If you had a thousand songs, forget about it. The iPod threw out that idea and decided to go with a click wheel with built-in acceleration scrolling. Navigating through songs went from being a chore to being enjoyable. This, combined with great industrial design and ample capacity for over a thousand songs, made the iPod a killer device. The iPod became a smash hit, a cultural icon, and even a poster child for the new digital age. It thrust Apple back into the spotlight for the first time in over a decade. But today, even the iPod has fallen by the wayside. The MP3 player in general has become yet another device consumed by the versatility of the old doing computer that you have in your pocket that we call a smartphone. So what happened to Kane Kramer? In 2008, Apple surprisingly acknowledged that Kane Kramer was the inventor of the iPod. At the time, Kramer was a struggling furniture salesman. He explained the events in an interview to the Daily Mail. Quote, I was up on a ladder painting when I got a call from a lady with an American accent from Apple saying that she was the head of legal affairs and they wanted to acknowledge the work that I had done. I must admit that at first, I thought it was a wind up by my friends, but we spoke for some time with me still up the ladder." End quote. So what happened? There were revelations that came to light after a patent holding company called Burst sued Apple claiming iPod infringed on its patents. Apple flew Kramer to the US to give evidence in their defense and used his original 1979 drawings of the iXi device as evidence that Kramer was in fact the inventor of the iPod. I think Apple essentially just used Kramer to get out of hot water, but he did get something out of the whole ordeal. Quote, Apple did give me an iPod, but it broke down after eight months. End quote. Kramer was paid for the time spent in the legal defense, but did not receive any royalties from the iPod sales. So that is the story of the MP3 player. I just want to talk to you guys for a second. As some of you know, I've been striving to make more videos along the lines of what you guys want to see, and it's been a bit tricky. I recently did a poll on YouTube and found out that there are a few of you that like the older style videos of technology history, so that was one of the reasons for this video today, and I just want to gauge your reaction. If you did enjoy it, let me know, and if you hated it, let me know as well. I'm just trying to understand what's best here. Thanks for watching, this has been Dagogo. If you've just stumbled across this channel, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Cheers guys, have a good one. Oh.
conclusion. It's me thinking.